Hi, this is Stefan from Conductor. And in this lecture, we're going to practice using the Kafka console producer to start producing data into our Kafka topics. So we're going to practice two use cases. We're going to practice without sending keys. So the key will be null and the data will be distributed across all partitions. Or we can produce with keys to have the same key always go to the same partition. So let's have a look right now. So let's practice using the Kafka console producer for this. Go into your code and open the file name one Kafka console producer. So again, we'll run the same commands both on conductor platform and localhost. They're very similar. So first things first, if you don't have any topics, which I don't right now, I will go ahead and create my first topic with one partition. And we use one partition to demonstrate a special behavior. I will let you know later. So my topic, first topic is now created. And the next thing we have to do is to produce to it. For this, we're going to use the Kafka console producer command. So you can look at its documentation by just typing the command and then you'll have access to the full documentation right here. But in this lesson, I'm going to teach you the most important ones. So let's go back to our console producer and have a look at what we do. So we're going to copy and paste this entire command. So the first part of the command, the producer config player uh, playground config allows you to connect to a secure cluster and the bootstrap server is specifying where the cluster is. And then we just specify minus minus topic, first topic. The command is a little bit simpler when you connect to an unsecure uh, cluster. So if you have a bootstrap server localhost 9092 and then topic, first topic, you're good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this command. And when you launch your console producer, you're going to have this chevron on the left hand side, which tells you that you're ready to produce. So I'm just going to say hello world. And then I'm going to say my name is Stefan from Conductor. And then I love Kafka. And every time you press enter, this is actually going to send a message into Kafka. And this way you have a new Chevron. And to just stop sending messages into Kafka, just press Control C and you're out of the console producer. Now we will see how to consume messages in the next lecture when you look at the console consumer. But if you wanted to do a quick shortcut, you can go into the UI and then you can have a look at the fact that the messages have been consumed here with Hello World, my name is Stefan from Conductor and I love Kafka. So this is the confirmation that our console producer has worked, of course. Next, we can actually enhance our producer. And when we start specifying properties to enhance its behavior, to change batching and so on, we can use the producer property argument. So in this example, I'm producing with properties and the property ax equals all just specify that every message should be ax by all brokers. So again, you won't see anything consumer uh, producer side that changes, but in the back end, if you say some message that is act, of course, the message is going to be act by all bro bro uh, brokers the way we learned about it, just for fun and then learning. Okay, so we've we've specified six messages right now, and these three have been acted, of course, because all my brokers are up, everything worked just fine. Another behavior you should have a look at is producing to a non-existent topic. So in this example, I have the same command as before, but I produce to the topic called new topic. And if you have a look at my topic list, as you can see right now, there is no new topic. There's only one called first topic. So if you produce to a non-existing topic, you're going to have a different behavior based on different clusters. So for us, as you can see, there's a chevron, so it seems like everything is fine. But if I type hello world, you're going to have a sort of timeout or you're going to have a sort of error. And this is because we don't allow you to produce to a topic that doesn't exist. And as you can see, we get an error message saying that the topic is not in the metadata, so it was never created. We can verify this behavior by running a Kafka topics command with a list and to look at the fact that we only have first topic in here. So this is a different behavior you will observe because if you try the exact same command but on your Kafka boots, uh, your Kafka on localhost that you've just created with a default configuration, and you say hello world, you see two warnings saying leader not available because it actually is no leader for the topic that got auto created. So you may see once or twice, but then after twice or three times of this error, the topic will have been created and the topic will have a leader. And so therefore this hello world worked. And you can verify this because well, if you do a list of topics. As you can see, we can find the new topic that get auto created. And if you describe that topic in case of auto creation, it will have, for example, one partition, partition count equals one. 
because this is the default you set for your Kafka cluster. So what you can do is that you can actually go and edit some conf some configs in the server.properties file, so the file you use to start your Kafka server with, and you can add, for example, number of partitions equals three, and by default, if you cre send messages to a non-existing topic again, then you will have three partitions by default. This is to make it a little bit easier for you to start with Kafka. But to be fair, and the best practice is, and this will be on many, many different clusters, that auto topic create will be disabled and you are strongly encouraged to create the topics ahead of time, which is why we have disabled it on the conductor playground. So try to get used to it. Lastly, we can also produce using keys. So if you have a look at our first topic right now and we have a look at some messages, as we can see, the key is null. So key null, value learning, key null, value just for fun, and so on. Because by default, when we send a message using the console producer, it's going to send the null key. But we can actually produce with keys, and we've seen that when we produce with keys, the same key will go to the same partition, and that's a behavior we will verify later on. So if we have a look here, the produce with keys, I send this. I copy this entire command, and we have a look at the arguments right now. So the topic is still first topic, so something that already exists for us. And the property is parse key true. So the key is going to be sent as part of this console producer. And the property is key.separator is colon. So that means that when you produce messages, what is left of the colon is the key, and what is right of the colon is the value. So let's press enter. We'll have example key, example value, and here is name. Stefan, so I send different keys and different values. And if we have a look now in the playground and refresh this page, so I'm going to just refresh this view right here. As you can see now, the key is name, the value is Stefan, and the key is example key, and the value is example value. Now, I can't really show you the same key goes to the same partition right now because we only have one partition, so all the messages will go to that one partition. But we will see this behavior later on. And when you use such a producer where you have a key separator, of course, if you just send something without a colon, you're going to get an exception because, well, you haven't found any key separator. So that's it for this lecture. We've seen how the Kafka console producer works. I hope you liked it, and I will see you in the next lecture.